What exactly is hypertrophy? Well, you're gonna learn quite a bit about it by the end of this video. Hypertrophy, in its simplest term, is the process of increasing muscle mass. Well, looks like we're done here. Thank you for watching and like and subscribe. No, but really, hypertrophy in its entirety is quite a complex operation. And truth is, you're not going to learn all of it from a single YouTube video. Heck, even scientists today still don't understand all of it. But for this single video, we'll touch base on some of the main factors of hypertrophy, its mechanisms, its types, and how we can go about increasing hypertrophy. To start, let's ask the question again, what is hypertrophy? Hypertrophy is when the state of muscle growth exceeds the state of muscle breakdown. Thing is, our muscles are perpetually fluctuating between breakdown and growth. Hypertrophy would require creating and sustaining an anabolic growth-promoting environment sufficient for promoting muscle protein synthesis, the primary process of muscle growth. To do that, certain things need to be sufficiently present. Things like amino acids, glucose, growth factors, anabolic hormones, stress, and many more. These factors then activate anabolic signaling pathways like mTOR that regulates muscle protein synthesis. With muscle protein synthesis, new contractile proteins like actin and myosin are synthesized in the muscle and activated satellite cells proliferate and produce new muscle nuclei. All of this ultimately results in the growth of muscle fibers aka muscle hypertrophy. Now, there are actually two recognized types of hypertrophy. First, myofibrillar hypertrophy is that increase of contractile proteins and muscle size. More contractile proteins also means more effective muscle contractions, which normally results in an increase in muscle strength. Sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, on the other hand, is the increase of non-contractile elements and cellular fluid within the muscle sarcoplasm, resulting in an increase in muscle swelling rather than an increase in muscle proteins. It is still debated as to whether sarcoplasmic plasmic hypertrophy serves any practical function, especially in terms of strength. However, it might potentially lead to even further muscle growth since the sarcoplasmic swelling has shown to further stimulate certain anabolic pathways. That said, myofibrillar hypertrophy is the primary hypertrophy that I would imagine most would desire. And that is about it in terms of the mechanisms and types of hypertrophy. Well, at least again, the main parts of it. Now, there's only one more thing to ask. What exactly do we do to increase hypertrophy? Well, it unsurprisingly comes down to primarily nutrition and physical activity. Again, the goal is to create an anabolic state, which can be done by consistently providing sufficient nutrients by being in a fed state more so than being in a fasted state. In other words, you want to provide your body with more nutrients than it normally needs. This is why bulking, the strategy of consuming more calories than you burn, is so popular for people that want to build muscle. Of course, for muscle protein synthesis to truly occur, we also need protein. That's what muscles are made of and protein itself is made up of amino acids, which are key components for signaling the mTOR pathway. Other nutrients like carbs also has a role in hypertrophy, but by and large, it is the protein and overall nutrients that play the biggest roles in nutrition-based muscle protein synthesis. But as great as nutrition is by itself, it just doesn't stimulate protein synthesis in enough to build some serious muscle. If we want to stimulate growth significantly more, then we need physical activity or exercise. When we exercise, our muscles are placed under tension and stress, leading to a biochemical response known as mechanotransduction. Mechanotransduction then leads to a significant stimulation of anabolic pathways, leading to significant elevations of muscle protein synthesis that can last upwards 48 hours, way more than food alone can do. Now, not all exercises have the same effect, of course. That said, resistance training tends to evoke the greatest elevations of muscle protein synthesis. But within resistance training itself, there can be a great deal of variability that can greatly affect the level of stimulation, such as the number of reps, number of sets, rest interval durations, proximity to failure, training volume, the type of resistance training, and so, so much more. Fortunately, I've covered most, if not all of them in other videos, so feel free to check Check those out if you're interested. But overall, resistance training is normally the best exercise option for stimulating muscle growth. And you're going to be in a really good position for muscle growth if you pair a solid resistance training program with a solid nutrition and protein strategy.
And that, my friends, is muscle hypertrophy explained. Well, at least more than just a basic definition. I hope you found this video useful, and please let me know any other fitness terminology and concepts you'd like to see covered in a future video. I would love to get more of you guys' input, because at the end of the day, I want to make sure that I'm helping you with things that you actually want help with. So, please let me know. Other than that, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a hypertrophic thumbs up and share it with your fitness science loving friends. Subscribe for more as always. Thank you for watching and don't forget to get your protein.